Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. We are here. We're coming at you today with Tablet 4. It did take us a while to get through Tablet 3, which was the key of wisdom, or as I like to call it on Aquarius Rising Africa, how not to be an asshole. But Tablet 4 is titled The Space Born, and this is more about Thoth's journey to his own awakening and to his own awareness. And there's some interesting stuff in here as well about the galaxies and about who we are and where we come from as human beings. So with that being said, we are going to be going through tablet four today. Please make sure you join us over on Aquarius Rising Africa at 9 a.m. for a live show where, again, we're going to be discussing tablet four. We always love having you in the audience giving your opinions as well because multiple heads are better than one or two or three as it may be so make sure you're able to join us at 9 a.m eastern time on aquarius rising africa of course if you can't make the live show you can always watch the replay i'm going to be airing this a couple of hours before it airs on aquarius rising africa so you have a chance to familiarize yourself with the text before we start the discussion all right and as always at the end of this discussion there's going to be full reading for me of tablet four so let's go ahead and get started i will be using doriel's translation translation for tablet four list to man to the voice of wisdom list to the voice of thoth the atlantean freely i give to thee of my wisdom gathered from the time and space of this cycle Master of mystery, son of the morning, living forever a child of the light, shining with brightness, star of the morning, Thoth, the teacher of men is all. And so Doriel says, Thoth in this tablet gives us some of his experience in search for his wisdom. He also gives a definite statement of his mastership. The breaking of his soul from bondage was the first projection of his consciousness. Through this developed power, Thoth what was enabled to explore the mysteries of space in time he explored other planets and ultimately reached the inner circle of light in the first dimension and so we've spoken a lot through this through all the first three tablets about this idea of bondage which thoth speaks about a lot remember and it was either the first or second tablet where he talks about how he sees human beings he sees them as flickers of light and the people that have more bondage their light is dimmer well what is bondage it's our own thoughts it's the yoga chitta it's the own vrittis the own enslavement that we put on ourselves through our misunderstanding of who we really are and as we know during this great awakening we are the storm how are we the storm because we have to figure out how to save ourselves we have to understand that the world we live in is really just a hologram for our own experience for the soul to know itself which he is going to speak some about in this passage he goes on to say long a time ago i in my childhood lay beneath the stars of the long buried atlantis dreaming of mysteries far above men that's just so I, I read that and I think about like all of us have done that, right? We've all laid outside and stargazed, looked at the stars and wondered what what's the meaning of life? Why are we here? What are the mysteries of men? So that's kind of a, a very, um, a very caught like there's a lot of connection between us and Thoth when Thoth was in body and being a child and wondering what basically the point of life is. Then in my heart grew a great longing to conquer the pathway that led to the stars. Year after year, I sought after wisdom, seeking new knowledge, following the way, until at last my soul in great travail broke from his bondage and found it away. All right, so he was working. He talked about the travail. He went through the darkness. He went through the dark night of the soul. He went through his own sorrow his own shadow side hence why we do shadow work challenges in order for the soul to know itself until eventually he was able to release his bondage we can't release our own bond our own bondage our own mental enslavement by ignoring it or trying to hide it right we have to actually lean into it we have to accept it and ask it what it ask our own darkness our own issues with jealousy abandonment all those lower vibrational things what they're here to teach us. What do we need to learn from our own fears? You know? So that's what he's saying. Free was I from bondage of earthmen. Free from the body I flashed through the night. Unlocked at last for me was the star space. Free was I from the bondage of night. Now to the end of space sought I wisdom far beyond knowledge of the finite man. And we talked about breaking from the body. Remember, the body is a beautiful thing. It's, it's the Shakti of the soul. It's the expression of the soul. But because it's the Shakti of the soul, it is the GPS of what you are here on this world to learn. 
So it is, that's why we have a chakra system, which we spoke heavily about the chakra systems and the third tablet. By the way, if you missed all the other tablets, this is your first time joining us. I will put those links down in the description box below so that you too can be caught up to the whole journey to the fourth tablet. Far into space, my tr soul traveled freely into the infinite circle of light, strange beyond knowledge were some of the planets, great and gigantic, beyond dreams of men, yet found I law in all of its beauty, working through and among them as here among men. Flashed forth my soul through infinity's beauty, far through space I flew with my thoughts. Rested I there on a planet of beauty, strains of harmony filled all the air, shapes were there moving in order, great and majestic as stars in the night. Mounting in harmony, ordered equilibrium, symbols of the cosmic, like unto law. May the, many the stars I passed in my journey, many the races of men on their world, some reaching high as stars in the morning, some falling low as blackness of night. So that's interesting. I actually underline that here. Many the stars I passed in my journey, many the races of men of their worlds. What have we been saying all along? Where do races come from? You're not black because you're from Africa. I'm not white because my ancestors were Northern European. You're not Asian because your ancestors are from Asia. Your races come from different galactic star systems, right? That's the 12 tribes of Israel. It doesn't have it's anything to do with Jacob. That's the controllers. The 12 missing, the 10 tribes of Israel that are missing are the DNA strands in you from your cosmic heritage. So that's what he's saying here. Your genetic makeup comes from whatever dominant star constellation you have within your DNA. We all have parts of everything in our DNA, but the dominant is, so I am dominantly Lyran or Palladian, right? Someone who's black might be more Syrian. Okay, that's all that means. And that's what he's saying right here is these different worlds, they're different races. And that's, again, what makes Earth so potent. And that's why Earth is such a battlefield is because us Earthlings, those of us on this Earth, are a combination of all the 12 galactic tribes. So that makes us the most powerful. And the 10 missing tribes of Israel are those 10 strands of DNA in all of us that are not active right now. That science calls junk DNA. It's not junk. We're going to go back and look at Doriel's translation and commentary. The planet of beauty was one of the seven inner planets which surround the cosmic consciousness in the first dimension. The shapes moving in order were the gold globular bodies of illuminated ones. So that gets into this idea that outer space, off-worlders, extraterrestrial is about extra terrain or other dimensions, more being interdimensional versus coming on a ship from some far off place. It's coming through portals from another dimension. Thoth was able to go into all the solar systems to see the different degrees of development reached on planets closest to the and furthermost from the sun. By, by men are designated those life forms activated by consciousness through their forms were seldom that of earth men. And again, that all that comes back is from the idea of the different densities and the different expressions of the human. So like we're a third density. So our soul creates a Shakti creates a body to be able to live in a heavier density like earth, you know, fourth density, fifth density, sixth density, where it gets higher up in consciousness and therefore the body gets lighter and lighter, and lighter. I hope that makes sense. The conquerors of ethers were the dwellers of Antares, the same race that had come to earth in past ages. Now it's interesting. I looked up the Antares, who these were, and you know, do you guys know that there are like video games for kids that talk about this? They talk about the Antares being these, this galactic group of beings that travel through all these planets on these video games, you know, so they're like telling us the truth. Yeah. They have solved the secondary interplanetary travel ages ago for they were the most enlightened ones of their solar system. Matter and form were theirs to command. And from universal mother, they will, were able to create anything they desired. So that again comes back to the fact that we are manifestors. We can create our soul. Your soul created your body. The soul is the Shiva, the body is the Shakti. So you already used matter. You use the matter of your parents' genetics to create the body that you're in, to create the experience that you needed as an avatar for this existence, to learn whatever lessons you needed to learn, and including inherited karma through the genetics as well. So that's what they're saying here, that these, these sentient beings, these 
people that conquered the ether that were able to create with the matter, with the nature, with the property, are our ancestors. Yeah? Thoth learned that man was universal, existing in every part of space, an integral part of the cosmic consciousness. The form of man, so far as its maternal entity was concerned, was one of the basic matter of the stars. The planets revolved around their sun, so the material body of man revolves around its own central sun, the soul. We also talk about the solar plexus being the sun of the body, right? And a lot of people know the soul enters through the, the sixth chakra right here, the pineal gland, and comes in through the, the body system, descends into it. That's why we have the bundas in our bellies. That's why you get butterflies in your stomach when you're nervous. There's a, an attuning of the soul in the physical body in the location of the stomach region also connecting to the solar plexus and of course the soul is bigger than just that but you can actually kind of consciously understand that again when you're nervous you get butterflies when you hear bad news you want to go throw up that's all coming from the gut punch this the soul of the stomach when one has freed his consciousness from darkness of disorder he becomes one of those masters who work upon the negative from the outside Man's body is formed from the primal substance, cosmic dust, and the ether in which the planet floats is also cosmic dust. If you've watched any of the Tartarian stuff, he talks greatly about the ether. Thoth goes on to say, Each and all of them struggling upward, gaining the heights and plummering the depths, moving at, at time in realms of brightness, living through darkness, gaining light. Reminds me of that quote from David Swenson, like all the trees in the forest are different, but they're all reaching up towards the same light, right? All man, all man there, the path to that light is going to look different for each individual, but they're all reaching upwards to the same light. But as you see, I'm plummeting downward into the depths in order to reach up to ascend up from the light to the light. You have to descend first. Magdalene speaks about this. You got to descend. You have to plummet into the darkness before you then come up, root up through the light. Know, O oh man, that light is thine heritage. Know that darkness is only a veil. Sealed in thine heart is brightness eternal, waiting the moment of freedom to conquer, waiting to rend the veil of the night. Darkness ain't nothing but an illusion. Death ain't nothing but an illusion. Light is your heritage. Some I have found who had conquered the ether, free of space were they while yet they were men. Using the force that is the foundation of all things, far in space constructed they a planet drawn by the force that, force that flows through the all condensing and coalescing the ether into forms that grew as they willed outstripping in science they of all races mighty in wisdom son of the star so you can be free of the bondage but still be within body doriel now says the solving of the mysteries of space and time gives the cause behind many manifestations of law which otherwise would not be understood thoth now knew that he could endlessly explore the gem of truth until at last he might pass into the cosmic cycle beyond this Thoth was free because he now knew the truth is limitless. And now through eternity, he could pursue knowledge. What do the Cassiopeians say? Knowledge protects. Knowledge is power. And knowledge is infinite. It's infinite. Man is not truly of the earth or of material, but in final analysis is the divine fire itself. Yes, that's the whole point of the Yoga Sutras. You're not your body. Your body is just your Shakti. It's just the expression of the soul. You are a soul. That is what you are. Thoth gives the key to freedom from the conscious from the material, and this freedom opens the path to other worlds and planes. When this is once attained, man is no longer bound but is free. Only through knowledge comes the ability to rise from the earthly body and become one with the light. All right, let's go on with what Thoth is saying. Long time I paused watching their wisdom, saw them come from, create from out of the ether cities gigantic of rose and gold. Form the fourth from the primal element, base of all matter, the ether far flung. Far in the past, they had conquered the ether, freed themselves from the bondage of toil, formed in their minds only a picture and swiftly created it through. Forth then my soul sped through the cosmos, seeing ever new things and old, learning that man is truly space-born, a son of the sun, a child of the stars. Know ye, O man, that for whatever ye inhabit, surely it is one with the stars. The bodies are nothing but planets revolving around their own central suns. So it's almost like he's taking us very back to the beginning of time when our souls decided to be in the illusion of separateness. 
right? And by doing that, creating these bodies, these holographic worlds, these planets, so that we can feel separate and therefore go through the turmoil of understanding we are not separate and understand that the soul is knowing itself through the experimentation of matter and the body and the creation of planets. So it's taking us back to the beginning when our soul knew it was of the light, but wanted to know itself more. So created obstacles. It's almost like resistant training, right? It's like when you go to the gym and you lift weights or you run and you, or you do yoga and you get sore, you're breaking your body down in order for your body to build back up stronger with more wisdom. That's what's happening here too. And that's what happens in spirituality. Anyway, you're going through the turmoil of obstacles of illusion being really saturated in the suffering that the obstacles and the illusions create and offer you in order for you to go through that friction to understand you are not that but to understand you are not that you got to go through it first you have to believe it's real first in order for then you to understand it's not real so he's taking us back to the very beginning how interesting is that how our souls knew who we were but we wanted a deeper experience of who we are so we projected and created a matter a hologram to then separate our soul, to fragment the soul into different bodies, to go through the turmoil of illusion, to understand deeply that we are not separate, but one, and we are not the matter, we are the whole, we are the fire within. Thoth goes on to say, when you have gained the, the light of all wisdom, free shall ye be to shine in the ether, out of the sun that lights out darkness. One of the space born grown into light, just as the stars in time lose their brilliance, light passing from then into the great source. So, oh man, thy soul passes onward, leaving behind the darkness of night. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, Doriel's commentary. As space is ordered and follows law, so man must cause order to arise within his own being. We've talked a lot about the different cosmic laws, laws of vibration, laws of consent, all that stuff. When this order and harmony of all parts of his being is perfect, then he is no longer bound to the material plane, and rise, rising through his harmony with law, he can ascend to the cosmic plane. In freeing the consciousness from the body, it is best to expand the solar plexus, the flower of life of the body, and send the life force flooding through it so that the body is vitalized in preparation for the consciousness to leave otherwise the consciousness is reluctant to leave then comes to the shutting off of the outside sensory impressions which should be precluded by a short fast after the silence induced by the will is completed the consciousness should be central in the pineal and the image or thought of the picture the place you desire to go should be formed then an intense effort of will directed into the proper curves and you are released from the body so basically, you got to go through it. You just got to go through it. You can't avoid it. You can't try to escape it. You got to go through it. Thoth goes on to say, Formed forth ye from the primal ether, filled with the brilliance that flows from the source, bound by the other, coalescent around, yet ever in flames until at last it is free. Lift up your flame from out of the darkness. Fly from the night and ye shall be free. Traveled I through the space time, knowing my soul at last was set free, knowing that now might I pursue wisdom until at last I passed to a plane hidden from knowledge, no not to wisdom, existed beyond all that we know. Now, O oh man, when I had this knowing, happy my soul grew, for now I was free. List ye space born, list to my wisdom. Know ye not that ye too will be free. You have no choice but to eventually be free. It doesn't matter if it takes 10,000 years, 20,000 years. Eventually, you're going to get to the end of the race. List ye again, O man, to my wisdom. And hearing ye too might live and be free. Not of the earthly are ye earthly, but child of infinite cosmic light. Know ye not, O man, of your heritage? Know ye not that you are truly the light? Son of the great sun, when ye gain wisdom, truly aware of your kinship with light. Now to ye I give knowledge, freedom to walk in the path I have trod, showing you truly how my striving I trod the path that leads to the stars. Hark ye, O man, and know of thy bondage. Know how to free thyself from the toils. Out of the darkness shall ye rise upward, one with the light that is one with the stars. Follow ye ever the path of wisdom, only thus can ye rise from a below. Ever man's destiny leads him onward into the curves of infinity's all. Know ye, O man, that all space is ordered. Only by order are you one with the all. Order and balance are the law of the cosmos. It lines, reminds me a lot of the uh, a scene Book of Peace, which if you haven't read that, it talks about how you can interchange the word God and law. And it gets kind of shows you like where we've gone wrong with like maritime law. 
Just interesting. Follow and ye shall be one with the all. He who would follow the pathway of wisdom open must be to the flower of life, extending his consciousness out of the darkness, flowing through time and space in the all. Deep in the silence, first ye must linger until at last ye are free from desire. Free from the longing to speak in silence, conquer by silence the bondage of words, abstaining from eating, until you have passed the desire for food that is bondage of the soul. So I, he talks a lot, Doriel did speak a lot about fasting, and I see, and we're going to do fasting coming up in our shadow work challenge, you have the option to do a three-day fast. And as Shanti says, what is the big hunger versus the little hunger? What are you really hungry for? So I, I feel like Thoth is using fasting and food here as more of a metaphor, like until you're able to not crave the human desire that keeps us stuck in the hamster wheel of karma as our samskara, then your soul is free, which is what a lot of the Eastern teachings teach. It's what the missing books of the Bible teach as well. Then lie ye down in darkness, close ye your eyes from the rays of light, center thy soul force in the place of thy consciousness, shaking it free from the bonds of the night, place in thy mind place the image thou desireth, place the place thou desireth to see, vibrate back and forth with thy power, loosen the soul from out of its night, fiercely must thou shake with all thy power until at last thy soul shall be free. Mighty but beyond words is the flame of cosmic, hanging in the plains unknown to man, mighty and balanced, moving in order, music of harmonies far beyond man, speaking with music, singing with color, flame from the beginning of eternity's all. Spark the flame art thou, O my child, burning the color and living music, list to the voice and thou shalt be free. Consciousness free is fused with the cosmic, one with the order and law of all. Know ye not man that out of the darkness light shall flame forth a symbol of all. Pray ye this morning for attaining of wisdom. Pray for the coming of light to all. Mighty spirit of light that shines to the cosmos. Draw thy fame closer in harmony to thee. Lift up thy fire from out of the darkness. Magnet of the fire that is one with the all. Lift up my soul, the mighty and potent child of the night. Turn not away. Draw me in power and melt in thy furnace. One with all things and all things in one. Fire of life strain, one with the brain. And ye have freed thy soul in its bondage. Know that ye are that for ye the darkness is gone. Ever though space ye may seek wisdom, found not by feathers forged in the flesh. Onward and upward into the morning, free flash, O soul, to the realms of light. Move thou in order, move thou in harmony. Freely shalt move with the children of light. Seek ye and know ye my key of wisdom. Thus, O man, ye shall surely be free. So let's go back because there's something I wrote here that I thought was pretty cool. Doriel goes on to say, the cosmic consciousness is literally speaking in the first dimension or plane, and its harmonies and order are such that man, while still in the material, cannot realize its perfect movement. The soul of man is a divine fire, a flame cast forth from the great fire, yet still one with it. Light and darkness is man, yet separate in power and order. And I underline this. A prayer is really a command. And it is the purpose of establishing a harmony or connection between the soul or consciousness and the cosmic consciousness. And I wrote, when a prayer becomes a vow. That's actually a line from Newsies. When a prayer becomes a vow. So when you pre are praying, what are you vowing out? What is your vow to the universe? What's that vibrational mantra that's being sent out there to connect with the greater consciousness? Doriel finishes up by saying, when man is fully freed his soul from the bondage of the material, then he is no longer subject to disorder or negativity and can seek wisdom at the source of wisdom. All right, you guys. So that was pretty profound. All of these tablets are profound. Tablet four was a lot shorter than tablet three. And at the end of this, I will again play you the whole reading, non interrupted. But please join us today over on Aquarius Rising Africa at nine o'clock Eastern time to discuss tablet four further. List ye, O man, to the voice of wisdom. List to the voice of thought, the Atlantean. Freely I give to thee of my wisdom, gathered from time and space of this cycle. Master of mystery, son of the morning, living forever, a child of the light. Shining with brightness, star of the morning, thought, the teacher of man, is of all. Long time ago, I, in my childhood, lay beneath the stars of long buried Atlantis, dreaming of mysteries far above men. Then in my heart grew there a great longing to conquer the pathway that led to the stars. Year after year, I sought after wisdom, 
seeking new knowledge, following the way, until at last my soul in great travail broke from its bondage and bounded away. Free was I from the bondage of earth men, free from the body I flashed through the night. Unlocked at last for me was the star space, free was I from the bondage of night. Now to the end of space sought I wisdom, far beyond the knowledge of the finite man. Far into space my soul traveled freely, into infinite circle of light, strange beyond knowledge were some of the planets, great and gigantic, beyond dreams of men. Yet found I law in all of its beauty, working through and among them as here among men. Flashed forth my soul through infinite beauty, far through space I flew with my thoughts. Rested I there on a planet of beauty, strains of harmony filled all the air, shapes there were moving in order, great and majestic as stars in the night. Mounting in harmony ordered equilibrium, symbols of the cosmic like unto law. Many the stars I passed in my journey, many the races of men on their worlds, some reaching highest stars of the morning, some falling low in the blackness of night, each and all of them struggling upward, gaining the heights and plumbing the depths, moving at times in realms of brightness, living through darkness, gaining the light. Know, O oh man, that light is thine heritage. Know that darkness is only a veil. Sealed in thy heart is brightness eternal, waiting the moment of freedom to conquer, waiting to rend the veil of the night. Some I found who had conquered the ether, free of space were they while yet they were men. Using the force that is the foundation of all things, far in space constructed they a planet, drawn by the forces that flows through the all, condensing, coalescing the ether into forms that grew as they willed. Outstripping in science, they of all races, mighty in wisdom, sons of the stars. Long time I paused, watching their wisdom, saw them create form out of the ether, cities gigantic of rose and gold, formed forth from the primal element, base of all matter, the ether far flung. Far in the past they had conquered the ether, freed themselves from the bondage of toil, formed in their minds only a picture, and swiftly created it grew. Forth then my soul sped through the cosmos, seeing ever new things and old, learning that man is truly space-born, a son of the sun, a child of the stars. Know ye, O man, whatever from ye inhabit, surely it is one with the stars. Thy bodies are nothing but planets, revolving around their central sun. When ye have gained the light of all wisdom, free shall ye be to shine in the ether, one of the suns that lights outer darkness. Out of the space born grown into light, just as the stars in time lose their brilliance, light passing from them into the great source, so, O oh man, thy soul passes onward, leaving behind the darkness of night. Form forth ye from the primal ether, filled with brilliance that flows from the source, bound by the ether, a coal ascend around, yet ever in flames until at last it is free. Lift up your flame from out of the darkness, fly from the night, and ye shall be free. Traveled I through the space-time, knowing my soul at last was set free, knowing what now I might pursue wisdom, until at last I passed to a plane, hidden from knowledge, know not to wisdom, extension beyond all that we know. Now, O oh man, when I had this knowing, happy my soul grew, for now I was free. List ye space for, and list to my wisdom. Know ye not that ye too will be free. List ye again, O man, to my wisdom, and here ye too might live and be free. Not of the earth are ye earthy, but child of the infinite cosmic light. Know ye not, O man, of your heritage? Know ye not ye are truly the light? Son of the great sun, when ye gain wisdom, truly aware of your kinship with light. Now to ye I give knowledge, freedom to walk in the path that I have trod, showing ye truly how, by my striving, I trod the path that leads to the stars. Hark ye, O man, and know of thy bondage. 
know how to free thyself from the toils out of the darkness shall ye rise upward one with the light and one with the stars follow ye ever the path of wisdom only by this can ye rise from below every man's destiny leads him onward into the curve of infinity's all know ye o man that all space is ordered only by order are you one with the all order and balance are the laws of the cosmos follow ye shall be one with the all he who would follow the pathway of wisdom open must be to the flower of life extending his consciousness out of the darkness flowing through time and space in the all Deep in the silence first ye must linger, until at last ye are free from desire, free from the longing to speak in the silence, conquered by silence the bondage of words, abstaining from eating, until we have conquered desire for food, that is bondage of the soul. Then lie ye down in the darkness, close your eyes from the rays of the light. Center thy soul force in the place of thine consciousness, shaking it free from the bonds of the night. Place it in thy mind place, the image thou desireth. Picture the place thou desireth to see. Vibrate back and forth with thy power. Loosen the soul from out of its night. Fiercely must thou shake with all thy power until at last thy soul shall be free. Mighty beyond words is the flame of the cosmic, hanging in planes unknown to man, mighty and balanced, moving in order, music of harmonies far beyond man, speaking with music, singing with color, flame from the beginning of eternity's all. Spark of the flame art thou, O my children, burning with color and living with music. List to the voice and thou shalt be free. Consciousness freed is fused with the cosmic, order with the order of law of all. Knew ye man that out of darkness light shall flame forth a symbol of all. Pray ye this prayer of attaining for wisdom. Pray for the coming light to the all. Mighty spirit of light that shines to the cosmos, draw my flame closer in harmony to thee. Lift up my fire from out of the darkness, magnet of fire that is one with the all. Lift up my soul, thou mighty and potent child of the light, turn not away. Draw me a power to melt in thy furnace, one with all things and all things in one, fire of life strain and one with the brain. When ye have freed thy soul from its bondage, know that for ye the darkness is gone. Ever through space ye may seek wisdom, bound not by fetters forged in flesh, onward and upward into the morning, free flash, O soul, to the realms of light. Move thou in order, move thou in harmony, freely shout the children of light. Seek ye and know ye my key of wisdom, thus, O man, ye shall surely be free.